Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology. And uh, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the enzyme classification and nomenclature followed by we have also discussed about the uh, enzyme structures. So, we have discussed about the primary structures, secondary structure, tertiary structures and the quaternary structures. And in the previous uh, couple of modules, we have also discussed how you can be able to produce the enzyme in the bulk quantities so that you can be able to use them for studying its properties or you can use them for other kinds of applications. So, in this context, uh, in this particular module, we are discussing about the important reactions where the enzymes are playing crucial role. And in this context, if you recall, in our previous lecture, we have discussed about the carbohydrate metabolisms. Uh, and where, when we were discussing about the carbohydrate metabolism, we have said that we have, uh, we have discussed about the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. And uh, we discussed how the different enzymes are playing the, you know, conversion of the one substrate into the product and how that is actually uh, facilitating the production of energy through the production of uh, NADH and as well as the uh, ATP. And then uh, in this uh, particular uh, uh, lecture today, we are going to continue our discussion about the reactions where the enzymes are involved in producing the energy for the cell. So, in this context, what we have said that all the reactions which are actually producing the re energy are coming under the under the broad category that is the catabolism. And catabolisms are actually mainly being done for the two biomolecules. One is carbohydrate. And within the carbohydrate, we have discussed about the uh, glycolysis and we have also discussed about the uh, Krebs cycle. And apart from carbohydrate, we also have the another biomolecule which is mainly being used for the uh, energy production and that is the lipids. And the lipids are undergoing for the energy production in a uh, series of reactions uh, collectively being uh, consider under the beta oxidations and beta oxidation is also being linked to the Krebs cycle. So, the end product of the beta oxidation is that the acetyl CoA and the acetyl CoA is actually going to be a uh, going to be get feeded into the Krebs cycle and that is how the all these two these two uh, all these three pathways are interrelated to each other. So, let us discuss about the lipid uh, metabolism and how the beta oxidation is producing the energy and what are the different enzymes are involved in this particular type of uh, metabolic pathway. So, beta oxidation or the fatty acid catabolism. So, beta oxidation is uh, being started when there will be an entry of lipid molecules inside the cell. But that does not start from that point of view. Okay, It starts when you are actually taking the lipid rich diet uh, in your food. So, uh, if you go back how the lipid catabolism started, the lipid catabolism started with the fat in the you know in the diets which are being, being ingested. So, you, you have the fat rich diet like the oil, you can have the fatty, uh, you know, the, the meat and you can also have the fish. So, when you take these uh, uh, in, including the pizza also, right. So, when you take these uh, lipid rich uh, molecules, they will be going to be ingested uh, into the system and I am sure. Uh, we have many of the enzymes which are involved, okay. So, they will enter into the stomach. So, the first step is that the fats are going to be ingested through in, into the diet, okay, and then will, it will enter into the stomach, right. So, there is no digestion of the fat into the stomach, and then the when it enters into the small intestine the bile salts are going to be released from the gallbladder and that is actually going to emulsify the fat resulted into the formation of the mycelis. And uh, 
resulting into the formation of micelles and the fatty acids and in the these emulsified fat is actually going to be entered into the small intestine and then it is actually going to be degraded by the enzyme which is called as lipases so lipases are actually going to get convert into the lipid into the glycerol and it is actually going to generate the fatty acid uh, the fatty acid could be the saturated fatty acids or unsaturated fatty acids so that anyway we are not taking care into this right uh, so it is actually going to be digested by the lipases so you have the pancreatic lipases which are actually going to act on the lipid molecules and that's how it is actually going to produce the fatty acids these fatty acid molecules are then been taken up by the intestinal mucosa so intestinal mucosa will take the fatty acid and other breakdown product to the convert them into the triglycerides and uh, you see this this is the chylomacron what you see and the chylomacron is going to be taken up by the is is the way in which the uh, fatty acids are going to be transported within the blood right so the triglycerides are then going to be packed with the cholesterol and echolipoprotein in a in the form of a chylomacron so chylomacrons are going to be packed where you have the um, lipid bilayers and within the lipid bilayer you have the cholesterol triglycerides and all these so these are like a liposomes and where you have the uh, several types of uh, apo proteins and uh, and you also have the cavity in which the lipid molecules are going to be filled so you have the triglycerides and the cholesterol and then uh, in the step number six the chylomacrons are transferred through the capillaries via the blood stream to the different tissues so chylomacron will actually transport into the blood and then that it is, is going to be present in the blood and they will actually going to go to the different organisms okay then uh, in the step number seven the fatty acid which are enter going to be enter into the myocytes and adipocyte where they will undergo the oxidations that is the beta oxidations and uh, apart from this uh, if there is a no requirement of energy there, there is a you know uh, low metabolic uh, uh, pathways then the fatty acids are actually going to be again getting converted into the lipids and that's how it is actually going to be uh, stored into the adipocytes. Now what is the beta oxidation so and why it is called as the beta oxidations. So beta oxidation is a sequential removal of two carbon fragments from the carboxyl end of the fatty acids. During this process, the acetyl CoA is actually going to be formed, and as the bond between the alpha and the beta carbon are going to be broken down, it is named as so because the beta carbon of the fatty acid is oxidized and the process occurs into the mitochondria. So, this is what you are going to see. This is actually a lipid molecules or the fatty acids, which is called as the pentadecanoic acid. Pentadecanoic acid means it is actually going to have the uh, 15 uh, carbon uh, uh, fatty acids and the bond between you see the this is this is the bond between the uh, uh, alpha carbon and the beta carbon so this bond is actually going to be broken down and that's how this particular moiety is actually going to be released and that will undergo into the beta oxidation to produce the acetyl CoA okay so every uh, two carbon from the this particular uh, fatty acid is actually going to be released and that's how it is actually going to produce the acetyl CoA so you can imagine that if this fatty acid has to go through the beta oxidation it will actually go for the beta oxidation for the eight rounds okay so in the eight rounds only then it is actually going to get converted for example in the second round when the this bond is going to be broken down it is actually going to broken down from here then it is actually going to be broken down here then it is going to be broken down here like that okay and ultimately it will going to have the uh, single you know the acetyl coa which is going to be left and that's how it is actually going to be fully oxidized and it will actually going to produce the large quantity of energy right 
So beta oxidation is a multi-step process. One of the major crucial step is that you take this particular, uh, you know, degradation product and you will transport it that fatty acid into the mitochondria because beta oxidation occurs inside the mitochondria. So the fatty acid, uh, first step is the fatty acid activation and the transportation into the mitochondria. So if you recall, when we are talking about the carbohydrate metabolism, we said that the carbo in the carbohydrate metabolism also a glucose molecule which is going to be, uh, you know, which is going to be taken up by, which is going to be taken up into the cell is actually going to be phosphorylate and then only the molecule is going to be in an activated state and that is how it is actually going to be committed for the glycolysis. Same is true in the case of beta oxidations. You have to activate the fatty acids so that it is actually going to be committed for the energy production and then it will actually going to be transported into the mitochondria. So the enzymes for the beta oxidations are located into the mitochondrial matrix. The fatty acid with the chain length greater and than 14 carbons cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane as such. Therefore, they undergo the activation and then transportion added by the three enzymatic reactions. Once the fatty acid reach the target cell, their activation take place in the cytosol. Fatty acid activation is a ATP dependent acylation reaction in which the fatty acid is activated by the coenzyme A and the ATP to form the fatty acyl CoA with the help of an enzyme which is called as acetyl CoA synthesis. Okay. Uh, it is also going to be called as the acyl CoA ligase or the acyl CoA thiokinase. Thus, acyl CoA synthetase catalyzes the formation of the thioester linkage between the carboxyl side of the fatty acid and the thiol group of the coenzyme A to develop the fatty acyl CoA. Okay. So this is the reaction what it is going to catalyze. So you on the end, this is the fatty acid and it is actually going to react with the coenzyme A in the presence of the ATP. So the one molecule of ATP is actually going to be consumed and it is going to be get converted into ADP and the reaction is going to be catalyzed by the acyl CoA synthetase or the acyl CoA ligase. Both are the same name for this. Uh, uh, these are the two different names for the same enzyme. And then it is actually going to form uh, uh, fatty acid with uh, acyl CoA. Okay. So, this is actually a very high energy bond which is actually going to be formed between the fatty acid and the uh, coenzyme A and it is going to form the AMP and PPI and that is what it is called as fatty acyl CoA. This is a very high energy molecule because it is uh, it's going to be contains the thioester linkage and that thioester linkage is very, very uh, you know, energetically very active and that is how this molecule is going to be in a activated, this is called as the activated uh, fatty acids. So basically you now what you have done is you have put the tag on this particular fatty acid and saying that this fatty acid will go inside the mitochondria and it is actually going to be undergo the beta oxidations. The mitochondrial inner membrane is impermeable to almost all the acyl CoA uh, molecule which are transported to the mitochondrial matrix via the carnitine shuttle. So there is a carnitine shuttle through which the, uh, the fatty acyl CoA enzyme molecule are going to be transported. So where you have the carnitine protein and you also have the uh, carnitine acyl transferase and all these two molecules are actually going to be participate into a shuttling uh, processes and that's how it is actually going to take the uh, you know the fatty acyl CoA from the cytosolic site and it will actually transport that into the mitochondria site. How that happens? It happens that the, each fatty, fatty acyl CoA molecule is converted into the first the fatty acyl carnitine derivatives in a reaction named the transesterification and it is this reaction is going to be catalyzed by the carnitine acyl transferase 1 which is present in the outer membrane of the mitochondria. So this is what it, this enzyme is actually going to take up 
T5T as I'll go a uh, target and it is actually going to uh, ge generate the fatty acyl carnitine derivative. So the carnitine protein is going to be tagged and then the, this derivative is translocated to the mitochondrial matrix by the acyl carnitine or the carnitine translocase which is present in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So this is the uh, acyl carnitine translocase. So first in the first step the, they will take the fatty acid and the fatty acid is going to be tagged with the carnitine protein. And uh, once this happens, it is actually going to get a particular type of, uh, you know, token. And this, with the help of this token, it is actually going to be get inside the uh, inner mitochondria, right? And the fatty acyl CoA is regenerated by the carnitine acyl transferase two. So once it enters into the um, uh, mitochondrial matrix, the carnitine acyl transferase two which is the, this enzyme is actually going to reverse the reaction. So in the first step, the carnitine is being tagged. In this step, the carnitine is actually going to be removed from the fatty acyl CoA. And that's how the fatty acyl CoA is actually going to be released into the matrix. So the car carnitine acyl transfer is two, which is located onto the matrix side of the inner mitochondria. Carnitine is then transported back into the inner mitochondrial space by the acyl carnitine transporter which is then ready to participate in the other reaction of the activating fatty acids. So then this carnitine what is going to be released it is actually going to be recycled back into the uh, outer membrane and that is how this carnitine will again participate into the conjugation reaction and that is how the fatty acyl CoA uh, is going, whatever the fatty acyl CoA is going to be generated uh, into the cytosol part will actually going to be get into the mitochondria. Now, once the fatty acyl CoA will enter into the mitochondrial matrix, it is actually going to be participate into the beta oxidation. So, the stages of the fatty acid oxidation. So, in the beta oxidation, you have the three stages. Uh, so, first step is the oxidation step. So, a long chain fatty acid is oxidized to yield the acetyl residues in the form of acetyl CoA, which is known as the beta oxidations. Then, in the stage two, you are going to have the oxidation of acetyl CoA. So, acetyl CoA produced from the oxidation of the fatty acyl CoA will further oxidize to the carbon dioxide while the CAP cycle to yield the reducing equivalents. And in the stage 3, you are going to have the oxidative phosphorylations. So, electron derived from the oxidation of the stage 1 and stage 2 passes through the oxygen via the mitochondrial circuitry chain for ATP synthesis by the oxidative phosphorylation. So, what will happen is that in the stage 1, you are going to have the beta oxidation which means after every second carbon the, uh, the 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 fatty acid is actually going to be broken down and that is actually going to generate the acetyl coa this acetyl coa is actually going to enter into the uh, mitochondria right so it is actually going to be produced into the mitochondria right and that acetyl coa is actually going to enter into the crepe cycle remember that the pyruvate is actually going to be uh, converted also into the acetyl CoA and that's why acetyl CoA will enter into the Krebs cycle and will form citric acid. And that's how it is actually going to produce the carbon dioxide, right? And then in this uh, acetyl CoA, this uh, Krebs cycle also, it is actually going to produce the NADH, it is actually going to produce the FADH and it's also going to produce the GTP, right? All these molecules will then enter into the oxidative phosphorylation. So, all the NADH, FADH2 and all that will enter into the electron transport chain and that's how they will actually going to produce the large quantity of ATP. So, first step is the oxidation. So, in the stage 1, we have the beta oxidations. So, once the fatty acid molecules are exported to the mitochondrial matrix, they are subjected to the repeated four step process each chain length reduced by the two carbon till the final product is acetyl CoA itself. So what are the steps in the beta oxidation? So first step is the oxidation. So this is what the first step. The first step is the oxidation. 
the first reaction is going to be catalyzed by the three isozyme of the acyl CoA dehydrogenase flavoprotein with FAD as a prostatic group. The electron extracted from the fatty acid acyl CoA acyl CoA are transported to the fatty FAD and the reduced form of dehydrogenase immediately imparts its electron to an electron carrier of the mitochondrial respiratory chain which is an electron transferring flavoprotein. The reaction is analogous to the succinyl dehydrogenase reaction in the citric acid cycle where FAD acts as an electron acceptor. So the first is that acyl CoA dehydrogenase is going to take up this uh, beta uh, 2 carbon molecules right and then it is actually going to uh, you know produce the it is going to use that and it is going to produce the one molecule of FATH2. Now in the step 2 uh, it is actually going to have the hydrolysis. So in the second reaction the B in the beta oxidation cycle water is added to the double bond of the trans enoyl CoA the product of the first reaction to form the beta hydroxy acyl CoA or the T hydroxy acyl CoA. The reaction is going to be catalyzed by an enzyme which is called as the enyl CoA hydratase. So this is the first second reaction where these molecules which are going to be released from the acyl CoA dehydrogenase will enter into the second reaction where it is going to go through the hydrolysis process and this hydrolysis process it is actually going to produce 3 hydroxy acyl CoA and uh, uh, which is so this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme which is called an enyl CoA hydratase which is similar to the reaction performed by the fumarase enzyme in the citric acid cycle. Then we have the second round of oxidations. So in the third step beta hydroxyl acyl CoA undergoes the dehydrogenation to synthesize the beta keto acyl CoA by the enzyme is beta hydroxy acyl dehydrogenase. Here the NAD plus act as an electron acceptor, the NADH is going to be formed in the process and its electron to the NADH dehydrogenase. And uh, so in the third step, you are going to have the production of another of another molecule of NADH, right? So in this molecule, this step you have produced the FADH, in this molecule, this step you have produced the NADH and it is also going to produce the beta ketoacyl K CoA, right? And uh, the enzyme name is the beta hydroxy uh, CoA dehydrogenase, right? Uh, so beta acyl, beta ketoacyl CoA will undergo the second, the next step and next step is called as the thyro, thiolysis. So in the final reaction of beta oxidation cycle, the thioacyl CoA is cleaved by the reaction with the thiol group of CoA to yield an acetyl CoA. So, so far it is being done, right? So it, the, at this stage, uh, there will be a thiolysis and because of this thiolysis, it is actually going to form the acetyl CoA and this is the remaining molecule of the, uh, the fatty acids. So, uh, this reaction is going to be catalyzed by the enzyme which is uh, called as acyl CoA acyl transferase and uh, the, it is going to give you acetyl CoA molecule and the CoA thioester of the fatty acid which is shortened by the two carbon units. So this is actually going to be shortened by the two carbon right whereas these two carbon are now going to be present along with the uh, coenzyme A. So that's how it is going to form the acetyl CoA. And acetyl CoA is a high energy molecule, right? So it's going to be uh, high energy uh, molecule and which will enter into the Krebs cycle for further oxidations. Uh, the reaction is going to be catalyzed by an enzyme which is called as acetyl CoA acyl, -CoA acyl transferase or it is also going to be called as acyl CoA acetyl thiolase. Uh, for example, if we start with the C16 fatty acid CoA like the palmitoyl CoA, the product after one beta oxidation will yield the C14 beta oxidation and so on and a molecule of acetyl CoA which is entered into the cave cycle for further oxidation which means if we started with C16 it will go through after the first round of beta oxidation it is actually going to form the C14 after that it is going to form the C12 as going to be called as like 10 like that. 
uh, it's going to be like C8, then it's going to be C6, C4, and then ultimately it is going to form the acetyl CoA, right? This is going to be C2, right? So you can see that how many uh, how many beta oxidation are going to happen? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. So after the eight seven rounds of beta oxidation, it is actually going to fully oxidize this uh, fatty acid uh, chain okay which is only containing the c16 molecules and in this process it is actually going to generate the eight molecules of acetyl coa this means eight molecules now all these eight molecules of acetyl coa then enters into the crate cycle then the step two is the oxidation of the acetyl coa Considering that palmitoyl will, gen, uh, will generate the acetyl CoA, which undergoes the sixth round of beta oxidation to get the completely oxidized to produce the seven more acetyl CoA molecule, all the acetyl CoA molecule produced in the beta oxidation of a single fatty acid molecule get further oxidized in the cycle to produce the NADH and FADH2. And uh, you can see that from C16, it will C14, C12, C10 like that. So it is actually going to produce 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 molecules of uh, acetyl-CoA. So if you see uh, how a one, mo and a one molecule of acetyl-CoA produces the three molecules of NADH, one molecule of NADH2 and the one molecule of GTP in the Krebs cycle. So, this is the yield of the Krebs cycle. Remember that in the previous lecture, we discussed about how, how much is the energy which is going to be produced when we are discussing about the Krebs cycle. So, 8 acetyl CoA will give 24 molecules of FADH, NADH2, 8 molecules of the uh, FADH2, and the 8 molecules of ATP or GTP from, only from the Krebs cycle. So overall reaction, so overall reaction for the palmitoyl CoA can be represented as palmitoyl CoA plus seven molecules of coenzyme A plus seven molecules of FAD plus seven molecules of NAD plus seven molecules of water molecule, and that is actually going to give you the eight molecules of acetyl CoA, seven molecules of FADH2, and seven molecules of NADH, and seven molecules of uh, H plus. This means uh, all these eight molecules are further going to give you the more amount of the NADH and the uh, and the FADH2 in the Krebs cycle. Now, how we can be able to regulate the fatty acid biosynthesis and as well as the catabolism? So, you have the two molecules, two major organs which are or single major organ that is the liver which is actually going to regulate the fatty acid biosynthesis and catabolism. So in the liver the fatty acid CoA has two major pathway it can either transport it to the mitochondria via the carnitine shuttle to get oxidized or it can convert it into triglycerides and the phospholipids via the cytosolic enzymes. The carnitine shuttle that is the three step process that we have already discussed right is the rate limiting step for the fatty acid oxidation and therefore it is an important point of regulations which means as soon as the fatty acid will enter inside the mitochondria it will actually going to be get oxidized right so the carnitine shuttle which where you are actually utilizing the two different types of enzymes and the carnitine protein is the rate limiting step so that so the more and more amount uh, the fatty acid which is going to be delivered inside the mitochondria it is actually going to be get oxidized eventually so once the fatty acids are transported to the mitochondrial matrix they are destinated for the beta oxidations for example the manual coa the first intermediate of the fatty acid biosynthesis by the acetyl coa also regulate the fatty acid oxidation when there is an ample amount of glucose supplied to the liver fatty acid synthesis begins from the style coa which is produced manual ka that inhibits the carnitine transferase which means if there is a enough amount of glucose it is actually going to block the carnitine shuttle 
right? Which means if you are, so if there is enough amount of glucose, that will actually going to stop the carnitine shuttle on one side and it is actually going to induce the lipid biosynthesis, which means it is actually going to ask this cell to accumulate the extra amount of lipids. So, other, other parameters that also regulate the fatty acid biosynthesis and the catabolism is when the NADH and the Na plus ratio is very high. This means the cell has sufficient quantity of the NADH uh, indicating the enough energy for the cell to perform the vital activity. So, beta hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase is inhibited. So, under these conditions, the beta hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase is being oxidation, is being inhibited. A high concentration of acyl-CoA inhibits the thiolase, inhibits the thiolase. Then the third is during the time of vigorous muscle contractions, the strenuous exercise or fasting, the consumption of ATP is increased, which reduces the concentration of ATP and increases the AMP that activates the AMPK, the AMP activated protein kinase and AMPK phosphorylase, the various other targets enzymes such as style coa carboxylase, which catalyzes the mineral coa synthesis. This phosphorylation and thereby inhibition uh, of the acyl coa carboxylase bring down the concentration of mineral K, relieving the inhibition of acyl carnitine transported into mitochondria and allowing the degradation of the stored fat to undergo the oxidation to regain supply of ATP from the fats. Then we have the uh, another criteria also when the blood glucose is very high. Insulin dependent uh, phosphorylase, for protein phosphatase dephosphorylates the acetyl CoA carboxylase, uh, thereby activating it. The ACC starts synthesizing the mineral CoA, which inhibits the carnitine acetyl transferase 1 and thereby preventing the entry of fatty acyl CoA into the mitochondria. This is very, very important to understand that when you have very high glucose, then the high glucose is inducing the insulin dependent protein phosphatase activity and as a result it is actually going to inactivate the carnitine acyl transferase 1. The enzyme which is actually coupling the carnitine to the uh, fatty acid acyl CoA uh, complex and that is how it is actually going to inhibit the transport of the uh, transport of the fatty acid into the mitochondria. So, when the glucose levels drops, the glucagon releases, activates the protein kinase A, which phosphorylates and inactivates the uh, ACC. So, this is uh, and the concentration of the mineral QA drop, which releases the inhibitory activity of fatty acids into the mitochondria and replenishes the Bt oxidations. So, this is all about the uh, what will be the condition when you have the high glucose versus the light glucose. So, when you have a high blood glucose, it is actually going to induce the insulin dependent phosphatase activity and that actually is going to convert uh, inactive ACC into the active ACC and as a result of this, it is actually going to inhibit the activity of the uh, the fatty acid uh, transport into the mitochondria and that is how it is actually going to block the beta oxidations. Whereas, when you have the low blood glucose that is actually going to induce the glucagon mediated phosphorylation reaction and that is actually going to reverse the activity. This means it is actually going to inactivate the ACC and uh, as a result it is actually going to induce the uh, the production of or the transportation of the uh, fatty acids into the mitochondria for the fatty acid oxidations. So, this is all about the uh, catabolic reactions, uh, what is uh, being responsible for the energy productions and you might have seen that we have discussed about the role of different types of enzymes in uh, you know starting from the catalyzing the different types of reactions or phosphorylation reactions when we were discussing about the carbohydrate metabolism and then when we were discussing about the fatty acid metabolism, we have also discussed the role of enzyme in facilitating the transport of the fatty acid 
from the cytosolic side into the mitochondrial side with the help of the carnitine shuttle. So, enzymes are actually very, very crucial for running the catabolic reactions to for the energy productions. So, in this is all about the, um, uh, the uh, what we have discussed for the today's lecture. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss about the role of enzyme in the anabolic reactions and we are going to uh, take up some of the biosynthetic pathways and uh, we'll discuss about the role of enzyme in those pathways. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.